Hello, and welcome to the Tech Theater Skills series. My name is Chris Schlemp. I've been an actor, director, projections designer, and theater teacher for over 20 years. And I'm glad to be sharing some of my knowledge with you. This series is on lighting design, and it's geared for someone who is just beginning their adventures of discovery in terms of lighting in the theater. The series is going to be broken down into seven parts, and this is episode one, where we will be talking about the functions of lighting and the properties of light. There's some pretty hefty vocabulary coming your way right about now, including some more in-depth explanation. So I recommend you get out a pen and paper. If you start making that connection between your brain, your eye, and your hand, you're more likely to learn. The first thing to think about in terms of lighting design is to recognize what the four functions of stage lighting actually are. Visibility, plausibility, mood, and composition. You can think of these four functions a lot like what lighting is actually supposed to do. What is its job in the theater? The first thing, and the most obvious one, is visibility. You have to be able to see what's happening on stage. If the stage is completely dark and everything is invisible, then lighting really isn't doing its job. The second function of lighting is plausibility. And the question you should ask yourself as an audience is, do you believe what you see on stage? If the sun is supposed to be rising on stage, is the lighting helping you believe that? Does the lighting make the reality of the stage world plausible? The third function of stage lighting is to set the mood. This function determines whether or not the audience is feeling what they're supposed to be feeling in response to the action on stage. Does the lighting help reinforce that mood. And finally, stage lighting is in charge of composition in terms of directing the audience's eyes to certain areas of the stage and focusing their attention on certain parts of the action. The way that light and shadow are arranged on stage is what is known as composition. Let's take a look at a few examples. If the first function of stage lighting is visibility, then this design by Donald Holder for My Fair Lady really makes the point. There is a street lamp in this night scene, but that light by itself wouldn't be nearly enough to see the actors' faces, so extra light has to be added to make them visible. The next function of stage lighting is plausibility. In this design for Hand to God by Jason Lyons, the design helps us believe that the reality that is presented on stage takes place in the basement of a church. Think about the overhead lighting that might exist in a basement classroom, or the light that is coming from the windows on the side from outdoors. Really, what's on the other side of those windows is just a blackened theater. So think about what the designers have to do to make the reality that the world outside actually exists plausible. The third function of stage lighting is to set the mood. In this design for The Glass Menagerie, L.B. Morse establishes the mood of nostalgia, regret, despair that is so much a part of that play, all through the use of lighting. The fourth function of stage lighting is to create a composition. In this design for an inspector calls, a lighting designer Rick Fisher guides the audience's eye from point of interest to point of interest, moving from the house to the three characters on the stage. Notice what's being lit, what is in shadow, and how your eye is guided directly to what you need to look at. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments section, or if you happen to be in my class, put them in the chat. Let's see if we can figure out the answers together. Next, we move on to the four properties of light. If the functions of lighting are what lighting is supposed to do to help serve the action of the play, the properties of light are the things that we can do to light to make them happen. The four properties that we can affect are intensity, or the brightness of the light, how much light is being cast. We can change its color in terms of putting a filter in front of it. We can change its distribution in terms of whether or not the light is spread out 
or tightly focused or blocked in some way. And then finally, we can actually change any of the first three properties live in front of the audience where they can actually see the change happen. If we take a look back at the designs we looked at before, but now in terms of the properties of light, you can see that in image number one, the intensity of the light is fairly bright in comparison to the other two designs. Or in image number two, think about how the color of that particular light affects the mood. Imagine what that image would be like with a different color, say a green or a blue. How would that have changed things? In image number three, you can see that the light is distributed with a very soft focus. Imagine what that scene would be like with, say, a spotlight, which you could use, but it would have a very different kind of effect. In this case, the light spills out more gradually. And the fourth and final property, of course, is movement. Any change in the first three properties, a changing of color, a changing of intensity, a changing of distribution, all fall under the category of movement. Now is a chance for you to test out how well you have learned the concepts from this lesson. Go ahead and pause the video and then analyze this image from the design for The Tempest by Paul Brown. Use all of the four properties of light and all of the four functions of lighting. See how much you can figure out just based on your memory. Visibility, plausibility, composition, mood, color, intensity, distribution. And there's one that I'm leaving out. Why is that? Yeah, you can't figure out movement from a still image. Good job. In today's lesson, we covered three main topics. We learned about the importance of lighting. You learned about the functions of lighting. And you learned about the properties of light. Thanks for stopping by. Come back real soon for the next lesson in the series. And if you felt like you got something out of today's lesson, then please like and subscribe. See you next time.